Just a few miles northeast of Tulsa, Oklahoma, near the city of Catoosa, the nation's most inland international seaport awaits an early morning arrival. This is the Tulsa port of Catoosa, an unlikely setting for an international water port where more than two million tons of cargo are transported by barge each year to ports throughout the nation and around the world. Year round, the port ships outbound gypsum, lava rock, wheat and soybeans, liquid fertilizer, refined petroleum products, and fabricated equipment so large it can only be transported by water. Dry fertilizer and today's arrival of commodity steel and pipe are regular inbound shipments. Port Authority, Port of Catoosa, this is the tug James M. Hughley arriving from the For south. For the captain and the crew aboard this tow, life on the river offers the pace and unique grace of a Mark Twain novel, where time is measured in days instead of hours. And the journey's end at the Tulsa Port of Catoosa marks the start of a new journey to yet a different port. Roger. We'll be offloading it at a steel dock, uh, which will then be loading it onto rail cars to be distributed throughout the country. Some 10 or so days ago, this payload, 1,500 tons of steel stowed into this hopper barge, originated on the Ohio River near Cincinnati. From there, it was pushed by towboat with other barges more than 500 miles down the Ohio River, 350 miles down the Mississippi, then northbound on the White, the Arkansas, and the Verdigree Rivers into the Tulsa port. While transporting this cargo by truck or rail might have been faster, a single river barge can transport as much cargo as 60 semi-trucks or 15 jumbo hopper rail cars, making the water a dramatically more efficient mode of transportation. The Tulsa Port of Catoosa is situated at the head of navigation for the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System a 445-mile stretch of liquid highway that unfurls at the confluence of the White and the Mississippi Rivers in southeastern Arkansas. From there, the waterway proceeds upstream on the Arkansas River to Muskogee, Oklahoma, where it joins with the Verdigree River, a tributary of the Arkansas. The McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System is a series of reservoirs, also known as navigation pools. These pools are controlled by 18 locks and dams that ensure adequate and stable water flow from Catoosa to the Mississippi River. The locks create a stairway of water, enabling barges to step up and down the river. More than 20 years in construction and at a cost of $1.2 billion, the McClellan Kerr Arkansas River Navigation System is a silent, often unnoticed testament to the visionaries who believed the unpredictable Arkansas River could not only be tamed, but economically harnessed. Few agreed. Even humorist Will Rogers quipped that the only way to make the Arkansas River navigable would be to pave it. For decades, the Arkansas River had proved itself a power with which to be reckoned. Between yawning spells of drought, floods of epic proportions swept away homes, property, and lives in Oklahoma and Arkansas. After the Great Flood of 1943, the time had come for change. Senators John McClellan of Arkansas and Robert Kerr of Oklahoma led the charge to persuade the federal government that turning the Arkansas River into a marine highway would enhance America's economy and strengthen her inland water transportation system. Transforming the Arkansas River into a viable resource seemed a Herculean task, but Senators McClellan and Kerr were undeterred in their beliefs that the Arkansas could be transformed to support barge transportation, generate hydroelectric power, reduce flooding, provide municipal water supplies, and enhance wildlife conservation, fishing, and recreation. In 1971, as the first barge arrived at the Tulsa port of Catoosa, the once fanciful notions of two headstrong senators were vindicated. An incorrigible river was controlled, 
and the once landlocked state of Oklahoma officially offered reliable marine passage to the world. We think, for instance, of the two-way savings water transportation is already beginning to bring the farm industry in this region. Lower shipping costs coming in mean that the farmer pays less for his fertilizer, machinery, and other supplies. And lower shipping costs going out mean that the farmer can pocket more of the market price of his crops and livestock. And that way, farm income is boosted twice, and the benefits extend across America and around the world to everyone who depends on the beef and the wheat. Today, the ebb and flow of commerce at the Port of Catoosa is no longer limited to the river waters. The Port of Catoosa also hosts a 2,800-acre and growing industrial park, offering multimodal shipping by waterway, truck, and two Class I railroads. The port performs its own switching services and operates locomotives with 15 miles of track. Within the port's industrial park, numerous international businesses ship and receive goods and materials throughout the year, generating millions of dollars in annual economic revenue. The Port of Catoosa's industrial park is an attractive setting for global businesses whose operations depend on the port's strategic waterways and access to additional means of transportation. The port's industrial park offers many other advantages for businesses as well, including handling services and ample storage for dry cargo, liquid bulk terminals for fertilizer, and fully developed industrial sites for manufacturing. Less than two minutes away, the port offers a convenient retail center where restaurants, banking, and medical services are available to the surrounding community and those who work inside the industrial park. The arrival of today's cargo creates a new hub of activity onshore as the port's 200-ton overhead crane swings into action. The economic engine of the industrial park quickly revs to life. In a precise ballet of man and machine, rolls of steel are hoisted from barges and transported to one of several steel service centers where the coils are unrolled and cut to length or slitted to precise dimensions. The steel will then be shipped to manufacturers, construction companies, and sales facilities at the port's industrial park or other locations throughout the middle and western United States. Products manufactured using this steel often come back to the port in the form of huge processing equipment to be shipped by barge to ports of the world, thus completing an economic circle. The Tulsa Port of Catoosa is a vibrant symbol of Oklahoma achievement. From its impact on the state's economy to its vital role in inland marine transportation, the Port of Catoosa stands as a quiet reminder of American ingenuity and bold perseverance. To ensure that our youth, our nation's future leaders, recognize the importance and advantage of low-cost, environmentally friendly water transportation, the port also hosts a museum and education center where the port's first towboat is permanently dry docked for public viewing. Now, as America's focus centers more and more on the health and future of our environment, marine transportation remains the safest, cleanest, and most fuel-efficient method of surface transportation. The dawn of another day awakens Tulsa's port of Catoosa in a slow, romantic rhythm and brings with it both the end and beginning of another river journey.